It was 1998. Ronnie Morrison was playing with Delicate Terror, and they had he'd left the band for some reason, but he wanted to start a new one. He asked me to sing on his new project. Um, Chris Carpenter was producing tracks for it. Um, I got a I got a hold of it. I was able to listen to it, and we just really kind of the songs came together really quick, kind of like Wildfire. They were so good as far as we were concerned, anyway. Just the excitement we had for the band itself was something we wanted to, to get out and share, so we heavily promoted every show we did. And uh, we caught the attention of our uh, local independent label, Solar Flare Records. We agreed to do a, a record showcase for them, and uh, it went off with, without a hitch. It was really good, and basically, Bob Wilkinson, the, the president, the owner of the label, just opened up his checkbook and offered to uh, record the album for us, the, the exposed album that that we had put out uh, under Solar Flow Records. So that was a fun experience. For some reason, Ronnie just quit, and um, I never got an explanation to this day. And Justin and I were going to to keep it going. I mean, first of all, we had this record deal. We had to. We had to fulfill. So at that point, we start just getting uh, a revolving door of musicians that are coming in. And and again, and Chris used to express his uh, God. I don't even know how to put it, but uh, he wasn't pleased <laughs> to, at the the direction the the band was going because it really was kind of his baby. I mean, he. You know, it was really in retrospect, and then at that point, it just kind of, it kind of got silly because uh, you know, then is the revolving door of guitar players and um, keyboard players or just different characters in the whole play, and um, it became a parody of itself, and we just kind of, it just took the wind out of our sails publicly. The band's demise happened after Ronnie left the band. Ultimately, as far as my honest opinion goes, or my honest my honest answer, it, it would be um, my my cocaine abuse had reached an all time high, and it was totally wrecking the band. And I would be absent for months at a time, years at a time, whatever. It literally took like what two years to write a song. And somehow it all came back full circle. Um, we, we just kind of never really, Justin never really gave up. He never gave up. And thank God him and Chris are so tight, you know, that, that Chris, you know, didn't give up either. You know, he was like, all right, yeah, let's do this. But I don't know what happened. But, um, at any rate, we, we're getting new music and we continue to write to this day. For the new album, Chris has come up with a concept, um, which is really cool because I grew up on Pink Floyd and The Wall was my favorite, favorite thing. You know, like when you talk about concept albums, that's just you think about Pink Floyd's The Wall. So it's really cool to actually be involved in something like that. Um, we're using a tentative title. I'm not sure if it's to work. As far as I know, it's the working title, and I'm, I'm cool with it, but it's called First Cuts. Um, it's got really, really great album cover artwork. Um, I think that the new music, what we're, what we're gonna put out is not only the best that we've ever done personally, but I think it's actually going to be influential. It's, it's, it's that kind of sound, you know, you hear it and you, you know, you go, wow, it's, it's, there's nothing like it on the radio. You know, you, you listen to the radio, you hear this, you hear that, and everything's just copy, copy, copy. And it's just Lights Over Roswell has, has written an album that sounds completely different than anything that's going on. And uh, I think that's good. Cool.